welcome to you all. My name is Sophie and I'm a lecturer here at UVA in philosophy. Today we hope to give you a taste of the sort of debates, discussions and styles of learning that you could expect to encounter if you were to study either philosophy or politics at UVA. In these sessions your ideas are vital and I would encourage you to all feel absolutely free to express your opinions and get stuck into some of the tricky problems we've devised for you. Speaking of free brings me to the theme of today, liberty, which seems like a particularly important topic to be discussing in the current political climate. So, what is liberty? On face value, it seems pretty straightforward, right? Liberty is about being free to do what you want. But this being philosophy and politics, nothing stays that simple for long. If you really start thinking about it, problems quickly arise. For, any, for example, if an individual does exactly what they want, how might that affect other people? Would one person doing whatever they want actually restrict other people's freedoms? Does that matter? Or is it just natural that those with strong wills or the ability to impose those wills simply come out on top? And then you might ask a bit more about what it really means to be free and the extent to which getting what we want is not actually freedom. You might argue that people should be free to drink alcohol, for example, but is an alcoholic a free person? You might argue that true liberty is to be free of all wants and desires, but how much discipline does it take to reach that point? Many thinkers over the years have thought very hard about liberty and argued very hard about liberty and what it means, why it's valuable, how to achieve it, and almost none of them have really agreed with one another. Some have argued that individual freedom must always be protected above all else and the impact of social rules must be restricted. Others have stressed that real freedom can only be discovered through a strong regulation of social life. Amongst the most inspirational thinkers, perhaps, on liberty are those who have reminded us that freedom for one social and cultural group is actually slavery for others, and yet more have recognised that what it means to be free at one point in history is no longer the case now or, in, or at any or at different points of time. So liberty, it seems fair to say, is constantly changing shape across time, place and space. However, some of the questions that these thinkers have posed do continue to come around time and time again, such as, what sort of relationship should there be between values such as equality, social justice and liberty? What implications does liberty have for the relationship between the individual and society? And what is the difference between having the freedom to do something and having freedom from something? and which is more important. But, as I said before, answers to the questions here are constantly changing and no two people will ever have quite the same point of view. Not least when it comes to thinking about liberty, which, um, which as I said before, gets very, very complicated very quickly. Now, to give you some examples of this, I would like to introduce you to my friends and fellow philosophers Davide and Janosch. Um, Davide and Janosch, would you mind introducing yourselves, please? Sure. Hi, Mr. I'll go first. Welcome. My name is Davide. I'm one of the lecturers at UVA in philosophy. I have uh, several teaching interests in the area of political philosophy. I mostly uh, work on the heritage of Karl Marx, shall we say, so ways in which the ideas from the person right in the middle there, the picture, Karl Marx, have influenced other later thinkers on the subject of uh, social transformation on the one hand, and uh, even the idea of revolution on the other hand. My name is Janosch, I'm a, a research fellow here in philosophy at UEA. I mainly work on contemporary political philosophy as well as uh, social philosophy, and I'm interested in the question of uh, how political and social philosophers can take into account the views that people like you uh, have on what's just and what's legitimate, so kind of basis for how um, we define the kind of rules for, for living together, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and Davide and Janosch are going to 
help try and fix a bit of a liberty-related dilemma, which she'll introduce you to now. Okay, guys, if you could consider the following situation. A local council is currently considering two proposals for a new shop to occupy a prominent space in a town centre. Both proposals claim to be offering a whole new social experience through shopping. Both proposals claim that their ideas would improve people's quality of life by maximising their personal freedoms. The council thinks that both proposals are interesting but cannot decide between them or think of any appropriate feedback for either party. So here we go. The first proposal says that we will only stock a very limited supply of products and only one variety of each. Customers will be free from the tyranny of choice. A special expert committee will select products according to the very latest research into human health and the environment. Another innovation will be that all customers will have a profile on record that details exactly their health and lifestyle needs against their financial capacity. They will be charged only what they can afford to pay, but given the products they need for optimum good health and well-being. Okay? The second proposal says, we will stock the greatest range of products that have ever been seen. There will be something for everybody. Prices will vary, but competition will inevitably mean that the producers keep their prices low. At the same time, the shop will supply a small number of very high-cost items, but keep them deliberately restricted. The shop realises that not everyone has the money to hand, so they will operate a generous credit system where people have the freedom to enjoy their item immediately, but can pay for it later. Uh, in instalments if necessary, and with only a modest extra margin for the inconvenience. Okay, so here's the situation. Um, Dado, if I could turn to you first, what's your opinion on the scenario posed here? Well, um, I think I would have to go for the first option, mm -hmm. and even if it sounds less appealing than the second, in the sense that there is not really much choice, maybe any at all, in terms of products we might decide to want to buy. Um, it has some other um, advantages over the second option. In my view, maybe the most striking among them is the fact that if the wider choice requires constant uh, constraints on keeping prices low, there will be um, significant competition among producers. And one obvious way of keeping prices low is to worsen working conditions. So effectively, by choosing option two, we would curtail the liberty of other people who may not be the buyers, but actually are the workers involving in the production process of what we end up buying. So for this reason, it seems to me that the liberty of quite a few would be effectively harmed under option two, and this is the reason why I actually prefer the uh, option number one. Okay. Um, yes, uh, I think that's... Uh interesting few points that you've raised there. I suppose you could ask, um, what does choice really mean? I mean, is having uh, more choice of a variety of products that basically do the same thing, that's, that's not the same as being able to choose what products are important to make, what products could be made, um, and, and most importantly, well, how, how they're made. Janusz, what do you think? So I think that I'd probably have to go for option two, not because I find this particularly appealing, but because I see some um, really serious, uh, well, I suppose infringement with very basic sense of liberty uh, present in the uh, first proposal. Namely, uh, in the first proposal, it seems the experts have the most freedom, mm -hmm. not people uh, at large, because it's experts that determine which choices are, are um, available. And in that sense, we can see how the experts, they constrain people's um, choice, well, obviously, but not just that, by interfering with people's choices, they might, well, in a society that's all about choice, interfere in the kind of, well, formation of what kind of life people want to live. And that seems to me to be quite a strong sense of interference. And any 
Lindsay Webb Pauli uh, should have that basic uh, freedom from interference, I believe. Um, however, I do see that um, there are some problems um, with, well, um, the kind of points of alienation and mass production. Um, but once we look at those, we probably have to look at the sort of level of the system if we were leaving the kind of question of whether you should have this shop or that shop, uh, that's a different matter entirely. Okay. Well, yes, Yashis, I think that's a really good point. I mean, going back to the experts, even if those experts have our best interests at heart, they are still the ones defining that. They are still in a position of authority over us. And this worries me, especially around the, the issue of how much I should or, or could trust them. What if my ideas and experiences clash with theirs? And in this case, you know, no matter what I think or feel about something, a group of people who don't know me and I'm, I've never met and I'm not likely to, will have the final say over my life. That, that is um, instinctively quite troubling for me. I also worry that history tells us that um, what is considered right at one point in time um, is subject to change in another. So giving such a small group such determining power to decide what is right or wrong concerns me. What would, you, what would you say back to this? I think all of these are valuable points. I just want to try and perhaps draw and suggest a distinction between making use of expert information and being uh, subjected to the authority of experts. So I must agree that the latter is actually a problem, but I think that there are ways in which we can rely on experts in a helpful and productive manner and we would do it on an individual basis in certain particular choices, for example concerning health, whereas we seem to be less inclined to doing the same when it comes to choosing which products to buy, but we might actually find it beneficial to make use of that uh, expert information. Perhaps it's also worth pointing out that we should not forget that even if we uh, discard the influence or authority of those experts that give us uh, indications on what should be put on sale, we are also subjected, we are in the second scenario nevertheless, subjected to the influence of experts in advertising or people who know well how to persuade us or even manipulate our taste or feelings in order to direct us towards buying certain products and those experts will not be absent from Yeah, I think that, that it points us to uh, moving from what we've been uh, concerned with, which was individual freedom, yeah, how these proposals affect us just on our own, to the question of how these proposals affect our freedom as a group, as people acting together. And in some sense, if we think about how we can be free as a group, we can think about how we can harness the power of knowledge and expertise without necessarily being similarly constrained by the authority of any one expert over us. And that would probably be um, maximizing freedom altogether if, if we were able to do so. However, of course, we will have to uh, figure out some format in which we can decide which kind of knowledge we want to cultivate and which one we want to trust. And that's obviously going to involve some kind of um, well, debate and um, competition as well. Okay. Well, I think in reply to this situation, would it be fair to characterise um, as follows? Um, I think we would have to say that at the moment neither proposal is entirely acceptable. I think, Yanosh, you might advise the first proposal to lessen or reconsider the nature of the power of the experts so that other points of view could be taken into consideration and the expertise perhaps made more transparent or, or more um, participatory on, on the um, part of the, the customers, potential customers of the shop. On the other hand, I think, Dave, um, you would advise the second proposal to consider placing a little more regulation into their shop, a few less products and perhaps fairer methods of producing and pricing. Um, in my opinion, uh, we should possibly consider rejecting both proposals and based on some of the ideas I've heard you discuss, maybe we could consider turning the empty space 
into something like a community workshop where people could learn the skills and the expertise that the, um, we were trusting too heavily to the, to the panel in, um, in uh, proposal one, uh, but equally retain space for a marketplace where people could um, sell their products face to face and not be restricted on what is available to buy um, or how much uh, it could sell for. But I'm not sure how the council might feel about that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much. And now, um, to move on, I'll tell you what's coming up for you guys for the rest of the day.